I don't know why it is uh, Okay, so I hope uh, only eight students are here. So we have given a little, uh, I mean, basic introduction in the last class, and uh, uh, we we are starting this course on geospatial data processing. So I again just given the brief introduction about geospatial term, which uh, I have explained in the last class and uh, I hope most of you were there in the last class. So geo means earth and spatial means any numeric term attached with that uh, uh, observation. So it is the observation or a data which is having certain information about earth surface below, above or on the surface. So what we are doing, we are going in this course in a direction where we will have the geospatial data with us. Okay. Now be very careful while uh, uh, I mean going through the literature as well as through the course slides that ultimately you should have the data first. We are not talking about any theory or any as such. We are just talking about the data. So initially you should have the data, then only we'll discuss about the processing, okay? Collection of the data is not uh, uh, not covered here. In the, in, instead, we are, we are having the data with us. Collection part will be discussed in more, more or less in laboratory section when we discuss about uh, Geoinformatics Laboratory 1. So what I'm trying to say here is that you have geospatial data with you. It could be anything. It could be coordinates. It could be ranges. It could be angles. It could be, you know, leveling heights and everything, whatever it is. And what we will do, we will use that data for getting something meaningful out of it, although it is a data, but it is a information related to certain, uh, I mean, uh, um, attribute, but in terms of numeric, but we will arrive at something meaningful conclusion based on that particular geospatial data. Okay. Suppose you are given height of two points. So height of two points will not be giving any information, many meaningful information. Only realizing after certain processing or certain, uh, I mean, um, rules, you would know whether height of one point is below the other point or uh, who is higher or who is lower and uh, in terms of height adjustment what needs to be done so that is a proper uh, understanding of data processing but in that uh, um, understanding of the subject uh, title what you came across it is the observation measurements okay so obviously when we discuss the measurement part or when we go with the observations, every measurement have errors. No measurement is exact in nature. And that is the first line of the book, which I have referred in the last class that you should have to go through throughout the semester. Only one book that is enough for you to get along with the, uh, I mean, with the course. Okay. And that is the first line of that book is that no measurement is exact in nature. That means whenever you repeat your measurement, why repetition is required? Repetition is required to get sure that you are collecting the uh, observation in a in a consistent manner. Okay. As any of the value achieve kare, agli bar jai, ya agli bar sola jai. It has to be consistent. Okay. And in that manner, what we need to do is that we need to take multiple measurement, repetitive measurement, and that repetitive measurement is called randomness. Sorry, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. That repetitive measurement is called redundancy, not randomness. It is called as redundancy. You should have enough redundant observation in your pocket so that you can decide further what needs to be done in order to remove those errors. 
and when when i say that no measurement is exact in nature obviously what i am trying to say is that there is certain error in individual measurement which we need to take into account i hope it is clear because many a times what what happens although i try to connect every lecture with previous lecture by explaining uh, the thoughts over uh, i mean in in summary of uh, individual lectures but what in general happens because you are students you are trying to read too many courses and in the meantime you doesn't follow individual lecture very carefully so that you can connect to other lectures so that's why what i'm trying to say here is you should you should need to understand why you are reading this lecture isn't it i mean we could have avoided this lecture we could have jumped to another lecture but what is the reason of reading a particular lecture is very important the objective of individual lectures must be identified the outcome of that lecture should be identified then only as a group of student you will feel connected so for that particular instant i'm saying that why you are reading this uh, or listening to this uh, lecture slide is because you need to understand that no measurement is exact in nature and every measurement have certain error and that's why you need to understand how what type of other what type of measurements what type of errors are there in the in the in the in this whole course we need to understand that okay with this understanding i think there is some problem with the uh, sharing slide i'm just reconnecting so that i should share from the appropriate direction okay just wait for a minute i'm just reconnecting Sumit, is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, when we talk about the introduction to measurements and errors, what is measurement? What we are uh, getting in terms of measurement? So, application of a device or apparatus for the purpose of ascertaining an unknown quantity is called measurement and observation. Okay. 
if you have to find out the area if you have to find out the length if you have to find out the width whatever you have to do if you have to find out the angle what you need to do you need a device if you do not have a device how would you measure angle is, isn't it there's a problem so application of a device or operators for the purpose of ascertaining an unknown quantity is called measurement and that is also repeatedly called or interchangeably called observation so measurement and observation are uh, are interchangeably used in the books also and in the literature also there is no problem but what need what what you need to understand is that when you are observing something okay when you are observing it means you are collecting certain uh, unknown quantity with the help of uh, you are measuring certain unknown quantity with the help of any instruments okay then what you what you will do you will carry out uh, you you determine an unknown quantity and subject to variation in that process of uh, ascertaining an unknown quantity what you need to do you will find out a value which is subject to variation so one time you will find certain value another time you will find another value that that's that is the meaning of variation so measurement of a quantity means assignment of a numerical value to represent that quantity that is what i am saying about geospatial so here in this slide measurements are generally explained in 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 in, the, in a layman language but when you say about geospatial term that means measurement of a quantity means assignment of a numerical value now angle have a different unit uh, length have a different unit they all have different units so what you need to do you need to understand that we are assigning a numerical value to a particular uh, attribute and as a result of the following the procedure we get observations or readings which we which are used to obtain values using mathematical now now if you have to find out the area can you have any instrument with the help of which you can find out directly the area answer is no you do not have any such instrument instead you have to first find out the length then width and then you will apply the mathematical model of area then only you will get the area measure i hope it is very clear to you if you have any questions just type in the chat box or if i am going too fast you should just interrupt me i'll get it slow down okay so typical tasks what are involved in the geoinformatics data processing is that get units of measurements get mathematical model prescribe procedure for measurements and then analyze it it's a very basic four steps in our field so what we'll do we'll get units of measurements we'll get mathematical model to simplify physical reality prescribe procedure for measurement and then analyze results okay so this is the overall basic intro to what we are doing in may measurement in years any questions from uh, from uh, from all of you if you have any question just simply ask and please try to be you know uh, what should i say please engage in this discussion process in the class and in order to uh, constructively engage in this discussion process you have to go through the book or before the lecture is actually begins on every day whenever it is maybe on um, tuesday and thursday just half an hour before or one an hour one one hour before you should go through the book what you have read in the previous class so at least you could have little bit understanding where we are actually heading okay because gradually we will move towards more you uh, know technical details where you need to have certain basic background okay so this slide explain about the measurements and why there are errors because no measurement is in exact in which so whenever whenever somebody ask you why you are reading this course of data adjustment or geospatial data adjustment you just need to say since there is no measurement which is exact in nature every measurement is erroneous or having or prone to errors that's why we need to adjust it before we further use this data why the question is again why why there is a need to adjust the data because if you do not adjust it and you take 
the erroneous measurements into the model into the mathematical model what will happen the chain of error propagation will start and it cannot be uh, uh, broken until unless you know that there are initial steps where your measurements were having error they were not removed okay so suppose your length and width is having errors obviously the area which is measured with the help of this mathematical model called l cross b will have errors okay now what are the characteristics of the measurement the no measurement is exact in this very beautiful line and this is the foundation of this course if this line is not there there would have been possibility that we are not, we were not reading this course okay so all measurement containers so these two uh, possibly uh, are the what should i say the uh, the backbone of this course is that if you have this that's so that's why you are reading this course now for example electronically measured distance have errors due to multiple reasons since you are many of you are from electronics background sorry civil background you know that atmospheric conditions are one of the reason to have uh, to, to 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 because of which you have errors then instrument reflector obviously some of you may not have seen total stations if i am not wrong so we will have total station we'll show you in some of the laboratory uh, just wait for that time then you have some certain scaling errors then miscentering of instrument and target now what is really happening is that when you use certain instrument there is a protocol isn't it there is a specific guidelines that how you should use that instrument and in any manner if you commit any mistake while using that instrument that will lead to error okay so if you do not center it proper if you do not level it properly then if you do not hit the prism center properly if you do not know where the crosshairs are so if you know if you do not know the basics protocol of your you instrument uh, how to use it obviously you are you are prone to commit errors and that is the that is the reason why the errors will be there in the uh, in the system and no measured quantity is completely determinable hence true value is never known if i ask you if i ask you what is the true length of a table let's say any table which i'll i'll give you and i ask you what is the true value of table you cannot say what is the true value you will only have an estimated value there is a difference between estimation and true value suppose for example if you go to the market okay what you will get you get the prices everywhere for any product let's say you want to have a buy a refrigerator you will get a price the same refrigerator will have a different price in another shop it may happen sometimes okay even in the in the online e portals you will see that same product is listed at two different prices in two different e portals so obviously there is no true value true value is never known even company doesn't know what is the true value that's why he knows that okay chip itne ka laga hai ye itne ka laga hai ye itne ka laga hai to usko mila ke add karke wo ek value bata dete they do not know the true value hence they will have an estimation of the true value and in in whole your life you will always have an estimation of everything okay so that is the one uh, one basic mantra that in this course that you should have understanding that no measurement is exact in nature every measurement contains error and true value is not known what you will do in whole process in whole uh, theory and algorithm and methods and mathematical model you will find the estimation of the true value okay now our job is to decide how this estimation could be improved okay so the estimation of true value is our task okay it is our job so no measured quantity is completely determinable and hence true value is never known any questions yes anyone noise from someone microphone yes sir सर 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 हम भगत या यस 
half percentage of error oh, the wait wait beta just wait i mean we are not concluding it here we are just okay. starting okay you have to okay. wait for that answer okay. gradually we'll know what will what is the basic tolerance level okay yes sir yes sir everyone do you understand what i'm trying to say here sir hello sir, sir can you hear me yes sir in one side we uh, on one hand we are saying that true value is never known and uh, on another yes. side we are saying that uh, we are trying to get the true value it means that no. we never have no true. i never have said that we are trying to find out the true value uh, means um, sir uh, what we are actually trying to make the what true value see as i'm as i'm telling you once again that if i give you a task to find out what is the length of the table okay then you will have certain n number of answers with the help of instruments you will get and measure it you will give me value another value will another person would come and another, again measure it and will give you certain value so you what you will have you will have lot of measurements to that same question what is the length of the table but if i ask you what is the true value among all these n measurements there is no answer for it because you do not know what is the process to get the true value second sir if a yes sir if a device has a mini minimum accuracy of let's say plank length theoretical limit mm -hmm. then can it so it can measure the length accurately see i am not talking about at this time what are what are, what is your instrument okay what is your device it could be tape it could be laser range finder it could be edm it could be anything okay it could be chain it could be tape it could be your you know uh, the any uh, maybe by hand you are measuring something i am not trying to identify which type of instrument you are using what i am trying to say is a job is given to find the length of the table now you can devise any any instrument or any way to find out the length of a table you will give me answer okay that my answer is this you suppose you are eight students you will get you will give eight values based on your choice of uh, instrument or device or way or mechanism by which you are measuring the length of the table so you'll give you give me eight answer okay is it true fine then what will happen if i ask you what is the true value out of these eight you do not have any answer because true value is never known you cannot find the true value okay if somebody is saying that okay sir i have used highest precision instrument that too cannot find the true value because true value is inherently not known okay but what you will have what is what will be your approach towards this problem when i ask you give me the true value you will say that we cannot identify we cannot measure the true value but we will have the best estimate of true value or an estimate of the true value okay you will only give me best estimate of the true value not actual true value now the difference between actual true value and estimate of the true value is one single true value will have only one answer but the estimate of true value will have multiple answers okay and in that process of multiple answers from estimate of true value our job is to find out which is the best estimate of the true value that's it so let's say out of 8 you arrive at five answers said these these are the estimate of the true value now our job is to find out it is which is the best estimate of the true value which should be ranked one as answer for estimate of the true value and accordingly the other ranks are given okay are you getting it the person who have asked the question yes, yes sir okay now please remember it is it is it is very clearly from this point onwards i am telling you you can never have the true value for any quantity in the world be it anything okay you can never have the true value okay 
instead you will only have the best estimate of the true value that is very big line and that's how your technical statements would improve gradually from day 1 to the day last of the course that is one point again one of the primary reason why the true value is never known because every time whenever you find out the estimate of the true value you will have one me measurement isn't it why how do you find the true value you will do the measurement by any device that is the way and the first line of this line is no measurement is exact in nature all measurement contain errors if all measurement contain errors how can you be how can you be sure or how can you say that this measurement is the true value so that is the reason you do not have any true value only you have the estimate of the true value the measurement with less errors whether measurements with the least error would be an estimate of choice for true value that is the that is the point what i'm trying to make here okay so what kind of measurements are there there are two kinds of measurement one is direct another is indirect so there are application of a device or operators to determine an unknown quantity suppose length and width which are direct quantity you go into the field to directly estimate with the help of any device that device could be anything okay and direct measurement always contain errors because it is a individual measurement examples are measuring the length of the table measuring an angle with the total station measuring an elevation difference with the level so all such kind of measurements be it length be it angle be it elevation difference these are all direct measurements because you have instrument to measure that okay what are the indirect measurements that means where you apply certain formula mathematical formula to get the values of the indirect quantity suppose the area which i have just explained you so for finding out the area what you will do you will multiply the length and width okay and errors from direct measurements are propagated with the help of this mathematical model or the formula resulting in errors in indirect measure so what is what is really happening from one uh, measurement with error you are getting another indirect measurement which with another error obviously our will discuss in detail about how this measurement of errors could be explained okay examples are uh, in your basic surveying you have heard about this uh, latitude and departures which are resulted from nothing but the mathematical function from distance and range and angles computation of area distance direction from coordinates and the errors in coordinates are propagated into the area distance and direction so we all know these basic uh, two quantities one is called as direct measurement and indirect measurement now what is really important here is when i give you one example let's say i'll give you certain uh, i mean uh, class classroom problem okay and if i ask you and if i dictate you to write that question that following direct quantities are measured so you should not be very much confused what are direct quantities what is in you should know what is direct quantity that means that is directly coming out of instrument okay that is direct quantity in direct quantity is where you have to apply the model there anyone if you have any doubt आगे बढ़ा जाए ओके सो नेक्स्ट इज एरर्स नाउ ऑब्वियसली व्हेन वी नो व्हाट आर द मेजरमेंट्स टाइप ऑफ मेजरमेंट ऑब्वियसली अवर जॉब नेक्स्ट जॉब इज टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आर द एरर्स एंड द एरर्स व्हिच इज रिटन बाय एप्साइलन हियर इन द फर्स्ट इन दिस फिफ्थ स्लाइड there is a difference between measured quantity and its true value that is difference between measured quantity and its true value so how epsilon is written t minus l t for true value l for measured value 
एंड लास्ट में देखिए बोल्ड इन रेड लेटर्स क्या लिखा हुआ है नो मेजर्ड क्वांटिटी इज कंप्लीटली डिटर्मिनेबल हेंस ट्रू वैल्यू इज नेवर नोन वही चीज जो हमने पहले डिस्कस किया आपसे कि टी की वैल्यू को पता नहीं है किसी को भी सो इफ टी इज नॉट नोन एपसाइलेंट विल ऑल्सो बी नॉट नोन तो फिर क्वेश्चन आता है कि एपसाइलेंट नहीं पता है तो फिर एरर क्यों बोला जा रहा है वाई आर वी अगेन रिपीटिंग दी वी आर अगेन रिपीटिंग दिस एरर सो ऑब्वियसली वेन वी वेन वी ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन दी एरर The initial direction is error, or maybe you could understand from this fact that what is in layman language called error. Anything deviating from the actual path, actual value is error, isn't it? So obviously we have to find out the deviation from any certain value. Then only we'll call it error. Okay. So here we started with the true value. but since true value is not known how do we find out the error then we replace the t with most probable value because we never know the true value so in the previous slide let us come back again to the previous slide since t is not known obviously we have to devise any value or any most probable value for which we could write in place of t so the next value of t is nothing but the value of measured quantity which is based on upon observations has the highest probability of occurrence now coming back to your original discussion just just i have told you that you have eight students in the class and i have assigned you one task to find out the length of the table and out of eight let's say five arrive at a single value there is a chance that you five people could have one value because every measurement will have a frequency of occurrence isn't it if you if you are uh, not a group of eight people only if you are a group of 100 people or 200 people what will happen a value will have a frequency of occurrence so one could say that the value which has highest uh, frequency could be most probable value that is one way of saying it so value uh, i mean for a directly and independently measured quantity what we generally go ahead with arithmetic mean is mp and there is one uh, equation for it in your basic 8th level mathematics where you try to multiply the frequency with the value and divide by the number of total of frequency isn't it is it that's how you do it and that becomes the arithmetic mean okay that becomes the answer for mpv okay and here in this uh, case you will replace that mpv with value of t because that is one way of representing true value so it is also called as best possible estimate for the true value and the difference between measured value l and each of the t will define the true errors so in case of t will have mpv okay so if you know the true error or sorry the true value somehow maybe if manufacturer gives certain answer that okay the length of this table is 100 meter and it is the true value if somehow he could give it nobody can give us by the way but if he is stating like that the true value of this table is 100 any deviation from 100 would become true error if you do not know the true error why you do not know because in major of the problems in your geospatial domain you will identify or you will go for measurement of those quantities which are present on the surface of earth they are not manufactured they are just natural you do not know the true value of that what i am trying to say is manufactured well quantities manufactured identities can have a true value but that too with uh, relied on the manufacturer but the natural but the earth features they do not have any true value 
and instead you would go to the field and will with the help of instrument you would measure multiple times thousand times to get an estimate of the true value which is mpv so in next slide we'll replace the t with mpv see here epsilon is written as t minus li is remember epsilon is written as t minus li and since we are observing the earth feature we do not know the true value but by multiple measurement by repetitive measurements what we are doing we are replacing this t with mpv and that's why the epsilon would also be changed to a new value called v the difference between any measured quantity and the mpv often represented by uh, you know in our uh, uh, gdp course we'll later on we'll see that there will be we will be using hat terms so x hat uh, you could see that there is a uh, hat mark over x and that's why we call it often represented by x hat and known as the estimate of x for the quantity is called residual or residual error so v is equal to mpv minus l and that is residual and for a single measurement the residual is given by x hat minus li so since x hat is the best estimator for t the residual is best possible correction to the observed value make them lead to a unique value of x and this value is used in adjustment since the errors are indeterminate any questions please don't be in hurry just look at carefully if you have any question at this moment i can allow the very silly questions whatever you want to ask just ask because later on gradually we'll understand that your level of you know understanding would improve and gradually you will ask the questions which are really difficult okay so but at this time whatever it, it comes to your mind just simply ask एनी क्वेश्चन भाई पूछिए आप लोग पूछेंगे नहीं तो कैसे काम चलेगा सर यस द रेजिडुअल हाउ व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय रेजिडुअल डू यू नो फ्रॉम वेयर दिस रेजिडुअल कम्स फ्रॉम समथिंग व्हिच इज लेफ्ट आउट No, no. Do you know from where this residual words word come comes out? Residue. 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 कहाँ से आता है? Chemistry से. Chemistry yes. में देखा होगा आपने. Yes. Sir. और chemistry में residue क्या होता है? कुछ last कुछ बचा हुआ. Leftover. Leftover, isn't it? जो आप लोग छन्नी लगाते थे केमिस्ट्री में उसमें जो ऊपर बच जाता था उसे आप रेजिड्यू बोलते थे तो छन्नी का रोल क्या है छन्नी का रोल है जो एरर है उनको ना जाने दे आगे और जो एक्चुअल क्वांटिटी है वही आगे बढ़े दैट्स इट फ्रॉम द सेम सेम सिमिलर कॉन्सेप्ट द वर्ड रेजिडुअल हैज कम्स अप भाई आप इफ यू आर डेवलपिंग एनी सिस्टम और एनी थिंग वॉट यू वॉन्ट डू यू वॉन्ट योर सिस्टम फुल ऑफ एरर्स और फ्री फ्रॉम एरर्स 
You always want your system to be free from errors. And these are the ways to get your system free from errors. This was this is one initial way. Later on, you will see you will you will be working with many uh, uh, you know advanced tactics to remove those errors. Okay. Similar to another, uh, I mean, similar to residue, there is another term called discrepancy. And you could see sometimes what will happen. There is a chance that you do not have too much redundancy in the system so that you could get to MPV. So what you will do, you will choose an approximate value instead of MPV to be represented as an estimate of true value. OK. I'm again explaining. There is a chance when you do not have luxury to have too much redundancy so that you can estimate the MPV. Isn't it? Why you have MPV? You have a lot of redundant observation. When you have a lot of redundant observation, you will have average. But there is a chance, there is a possibility when you do not have luxury to have redundant observation. Instead, you have only single value. Let's say, for example, then that approximate value would serve as a estimate for true value. Or, or there may be a situation your device is not working properly and you know certain tricks by which you can manipulate the data and you arrive at a value which represents the approximate value of true value. Then you will choose, let's say, X naught as a value, which is not MPV. You know it, it is not MPV. In that case, it will not serve the purpose and it will not be called as residual. Instead, it will be called as discrepancy. So I'll, I'll go back to last slide and you see here that MPV is re replaced by X naught. V is replaced by W. ठीक है. Last line पढ़िए क्या लिखा है? As WI decreases to its minimum value, VI X naught will approach to X hat. जैसे जैसे आप discrepancy को खत्म करेंगे, zero की ओर ले चलेंगे या residual की ओर ले चलेंगे. Your X naught will approach to X hat. That means your X naught will become MPV. Discrepancy would be least used in this course. However, it needs to be explained here. The reason is simple. Many one can many 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 people can ask, what if you do not have the MPV? How do you estimate the error? Then you need to have an answer. Okay. That's why it is explained. However, it will be least used in this uh, your case in the course. OK, coming back to the error part, we need to understand what type of errors are there in the system, which, uh, you know, uh, before dealing with those errors, before dealing with those removal of those errors, you need to understand what are the properties, what are the classification of these uh, these are so-called uh, errors. So there are two types of errors. One is on the basis of source of errors, you could uh, define it. And on the basis of types of errors, you could define it. OK. So on the basis of sources of errors, let us see what are the different types and on the basis of types of errors, let us see what are the different types. So when you define the errors on the sources of errors, there are three types. One is instrumental errors, another is natural errors and third is personal errors. Okay. Please remember since you are from geospatial domain, or geoinformatics professionals. 
will take example from our field only. We will not take example outside our field for betterment of your understanding. So, the instrumental errors generally caused by imperfection in instruments, construction or adjustment. Examples, this says length of tape too short or long, instrument reflector offset of an EDM, sensitivity of level voils, and there are many, many things which an instrument, because instrument is an electronic device, it will have different problems. So you will have to deal with it, okay? The second is natural errors. That is caused by changing condition in the sur surrounding environment, changing atmospheric condition along the line of sight of EDM leveling observations. Third is personal errors. Personal errors means that caused by limitation of in human senses and manual dexterity ability to read graduations on a rod tape etc ability to center optics on a target ability to center a leveling voil if there are certain problems with your skill level because of which errors could be there in your observation if you are not skilled enough Ajkal, our PM is very much focused on improving the skills. If you do not have your skills, how would you be called as a geoinformatics professional? In this course of MTech program of two years, you will be skilled. You will be given skills so that in future when you work in this field, errors because of personal nature should not be there. That means you should be skilled enough to read graduations, to center optics on target, to center a leveling wall. So all kind of errors could be eliminated. I'm again repeating, your measurements are not exact in nature, okay? Your measurement contain errors. These are the sources of errors, which we are reading right now. You will have to follow the residual, you will always target the residuals throughout this course and throughout your life until unless you remain in this field, you will always target the residual. The residual means deviation of individual observation from most probable value. Most probable value is a best estimate of true value. It is not the true value, but it is the best estimate of the true value. How the most probable value is measured? One basic formula, one basic layman understanding of finding out the MPV is taking arithmetic mean. If you do not know any specific answer, just simply go with the arithmetic mean. But, but there is one little rule aapko units ka dhyan rakhna you cannot merge length with angle angle with height height with length ye aapko bahut vishesh dhyan rakhna observations aapke multiple type se aayenge in a system you will have measurement from linear side angular side height side, every side you will have certain measurements. So you do not have to mix them. You do not have to mix them. Okay, then what are the types of error? These are the sources of error. What are the types of error? Uh, this mistakes you have to avoid. Mistakes are sometimes also called as outliers, also called as blunders. Okay. They are caused by confusions or carelessness of the observer, also known as blunder or cross error.
again just go with the terminology they are caused by confusion confusion kaise hua do dost aapas mein group bana kar ke work kar rahe hain obviously in this friendship many things happens and instrument use karte waqt laparwahi baratte hain what will happen somebody who is observing the reading told his friend to write 17.21 and because of you know the carelessness he writes 71.25 or 70.25 he told 17.25 and he is not serious at all he writes 70.25 this is the confusion this is the carelessness and you will write the wrong value that becomes the blood bond we have some independent checks and balances that and it needs to be eliminated from the processing or before the processing rather technically outliers are either blunders or large random errors what are the examples forgetting or falling failing to set a, the ppm correction when measuring distances electronically recording errors just i have told you one answer so sometimes this happen that although generally in this electronic devices there are mistakes are not frequent to happen but sometimes it happens so you have to avoid the mistakes okay what are the next type of errors systematic errors systematic errors matlab bytes terminology itself it is systematic in nature it is not arbitrary it is systematic it follows some physical and mathematical law and thus can be corrected for mathematically or by following proper field procedures okay they are deterministic in nature that's very beautiful that systematic nature or systematic type of it's very it should be written in bold i uh, i should say because because of which you should always remember that deterministic nature of the error is for only and only systematic error what do you mean by deterministic chaliye sahi hai okay pehle mera question pehle bataiye what is deterministic a definite value can be known very good answer a single value a definite value means a single value would be there there would be no chance of giving range of values multiple values deterministic means you will have single value ab bataiye apna question sir previ previously you have said uh, true value cannot be known so the and cannot be deterministic which one so the error can sir in first slide uh -huh. uh, second slide uh -huh. you have said uh, that epsilon was equals to t minus l t minus l okay and you have said uh, that true value is not deterministic we cannot know hmm so error should also be not deterministic but here you are saying it is deterministic no 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 don't you are confused in a sense the confusion level is this what i'm trying to say in the case of uh, uh, the error initial slide that the true value is not known but because of true value you will have three types of error that is what i'm trying to say here it is true that we do not know the true value okay but variation 
or since we are replacing that true value t with mpv there are three chances that that the types of error would appear first we discussed as mistake second systematic and third will come later on nature of error we have discussed there are three types instrumental natural and so on but jo error aa raha hai let's say aapne kaha ki mere observation mein 2 cm ki error aayi that 2 cm has to be categorized whether this 2 cm or 2 degree is of is by mistake you are getting it or obviously source of error batane ki karan honge aap keh sakte hain mera instrument kharab tha ya barish bahut ho rahi thi there are reason for giving the answer for source of the nature but answer for type of the source type of the error should be also given at the same time true value not known maine bola hai but true value ka answer ek de diya gaya hai true value is replaced by mpv and by the name itself it says most probable value value that has highest probability of occurrence yes sir i confuse between t and mpv my discussion at this slide is when you know that there is a error between mpv and individual observation where it has to be categorized it should be mistake whether it is a systematic error or next we'll discuss in a few moment what it is so the systematic error are deterministic in nature and as the student rightly said that you have a single value it could be positive it could be negative it could be zero whatever it is and in your mathematical understanding it is the one which is called as biases or bias इंटेलेक्चुअल्स जो होते हैं जस्ट लाइक अस यू एंड मी वी आर कॉल्ड इंटेलेक्चुअल्स इंटेलेक्चुअल्स बायस्ड हो जाते हैं वाई बिकॉज दे हैव लॉजिकल थिंकिंग इन देयर प्रोसेस एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट लॉजिकल थिंकिंग दे गेट बायस्ड एक आइडिया एक आइडिया से जुड़ा हुआ दूसरा आइडिया दूसरा आइडिया से जुड़ा हुआ तीसरा आइडिया और एक चेन ऑफ आइडिया क्रिएट होती है जिससे आप बायस होते ओके एग्जांपल्स डिफरेंट टेप करेक्शंस इन चेनिंग ऑपरेशन वर्टिकल एक्सिस ऑफ टोटल स्टेशन नॉट परपेंडिकुलर टू ओरिजॉन्टल एक्सिस एंड फॉरगेट अबाउट दिस एग्जांपल्स जस्ट सिंपल से सिस्टमेटिक नेचर वुड बी इधर इन पॉजिटिव डायरेक्शन और कुमुलेटिव इन एडिशन और कुमुलेटिव इन सब्सट्रैक्शन ऐसा नहीं होगा कि एक पॉजिटिव एक निगेटिव ऐसा नहीं इसके कुछ एग्जाम्पल्स हम लोग देखेंगे बट वॉट इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज आई गिव यू सर्टन प्रॉब्लम एंड वेयर यू फील दैट दिस डिटर्मिस्टिक नेचर प्लेज अ वेरी वाइटल रोल the third type of error is known as random errors random errors errors that remain in a measurement after removing systematic errors and mistakes or blunders they are also called as compensating errors results of imperfection in instrument construction or limitation in human senses magnitudes are generally small do not follow any functional relationship 
based on a deterministic system they follow the law of probability and hence stochastic model is used they are all they are as likely to be positive as negative in sign impossible to avoid magnitude and behavior of such error is unknown and observer has no control over it there are so many characteristics are written for random errors and my dear students we are reading this course only to deal with random errors this whole course is based on removing the random errors why because systematic errors mistakes they all will be removed because you know the model you know the rules you know the threshold by which you can remove the mistakes you know the mathematical model by which you can remove the systematic error because it is deterministic in nature when something is deterministic it follows certain mathematical model so when you remove mistakes systematic errors what remains is random errors now my again question is let's say i have just explained one example that 2 cm that 2 cm will contain certain part of randomness certain part of systematic also and there is a chance that this blunder is also there but sometimes when something is in blunder or something is mistakes the randomness and systematic nature doesn't play much part it is seriously avoided and cannot be included in the system so that 2 cm generally will have systematic component and random by following certain mathematical understanding you can estimate the systematic error in that 2 cm and once you remove it the only portion which remains is randomness and this whole course is you will be reading how to remove those random errors and i must say here you cannot completely remove it they are bound to happen they will be there in the system you can only minimize it you can only reduce it just like meditation you can reduce or flush out all the negative negative thoughts or negative energy but still there is some which remains just like that you will have some random errors which will be there in the system and that will create the chain of error propagation the objective is to understand first what is this behavior of random errors first prime important the behavior of random errors second since it doesn't follow any mathematical model we need to understand if it follows the law of probability which probability distribution function needs to be studied first which stochastic model needs to be stu studied first to remove those random errors kyunki agar aapko unka behavior nahi pata hoga since it is occurring both in positive and negative equally if you do not know their probability distribution if you do not know their stochastic characteristic you cannot develop or evolve your further set of rules to avoid those random errors to minimize those random errors to develop a adjustment model which deal with the removing these so called random any questions okay sir are random errors deterministic no they are not deterministic we can only have the probabilistic approach towards them 
we can only know the probability of their occurrence. Now, based on your understanding of your 11th level mathematics or 12th level so called mathematics, you know what is probability. We are not dealing with that kind of probability questions which you have must have prepared for JE or so called, but instead we are more focused over how our answer could be there. So this slide is only for your revising your basic concept. Just read it very carefully because everything is written very crystal clear. We do not have to deviate from the original de definition of probability. I hope it is very clear and uh, you all can. Yeah, this is the high time that I must tell you that along with the, the course, what you need to cover in the terms of prerequisites, because you know every course has certain prerequisites, and at PG level, this course has certain prerequisites. The prerequisite is very simple. One, you have to cover the matrices basis. linear algebra ki matrix ke jo operations hai, unke baare mein thoda sa padna padega. Aur uske liye humne aapke liye kuch assignment tayar karwaya hai. Wo hum aapko forward karenge. Aur usko aapko complete karna hai. That assignment, once you do it, that will refresh your all understanding in terms of various operations of matrix algebra. Once it is done, then the second one will be the MATLAB or Octave, which you need to, uh, I mean, practice it throughout this course. You will be given assignments. It is very essential that you should start, uh, you know, in terms of uh, learning the MATLAB or Octave, whatever you feel comfortable. MATLAB is generally available for student version. It is available. You can download it, you can install it. You have to do the, all the assignments in the math level. Okay. So that is one thing. Even our institute has now procured the student version and you can simply uh, install it on your PC with your ID. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to one faculty who is dealing with it and will ensure that you should have the licensed version so that you can simply work on it, okay? But don't get away with it. Aapko karna hai, aapko MATLAB seekhna hai. This is prerequisite. Not for this particular course, but for whole general complex discipline. Aapko at least take programming language ani chahi. Python, aaj ke samay mein kafi trending hai. Log seekh hai usko. Aur aap bhi independent platform pe Python seekh sa. Believe me, if you know Python and MATLAB, there is nothing you cannot do in this way. Everything is open to you. And you have to come out of your comfortable zone. If I am a civil or yes, it has to be very clear from day one. Up MATLAB, 
पाइथन आपका इंटरेस्ट है आप सीखिए आप ओपन है उसके लिए देर आर वेरियस ऑनलाइन यूट्यूब टूटोरियल अवेलेबल विच यू कैन स्टार्ट विथ ओके इसमें कोई भी किसी प्रकार का एक्सक्यूज नहीं चले इस चीज को थोड़ा सा अभी से आप समझ लीजिए सिमिलरली इन दी प्रोबेबिलिटी थ्योरी वी हैव कंपाउंड इवेंट्स कंपाउंड इवेंट्स मीन्स साइमल्टेनियस अक्रेंस ऑफ टू और मोर इवेंट्स एंड द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ए कंपाउंड इवेंट इज द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ ईच प्रोबेबिलिटीज ऑफ ईच इंडिविजुअल इवेंट इट्स वेरी बेसिक डेफिनेशन देर इज नथिंग न्यू इन इट सो सपोज इफ यू टॉक अबाउट वन एक्सपेरिमेंट एट से सो एक्सपेरिमेंट इज से you have two box in one box there is one red ball with four to balls total and in box 2 there are two red balls out of five balls total now the question is what is the probability that two red balls will, will be drawn from drawn when one ball is randomly selected from each box अब आप बताइए इसका आंसर आपके पास समय है दो चार पांच मिनट का आप अपना इस प्रॉब्लम को थोड़ा समझिए क्वेश्चन आपके सामने लिखा हुआ है यू कैन रीड इट अगेन सर वन बाई टेन जल्दबाजी नहीं So one by twenty. <laughs> देखिए ऑब्जेक्टिव इसका क्या है वो मैं आपको थोड़ी देर में बताऊंगा द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस प्रॉब्लम इज वेरी सिंपल टू एक्सप्लेन दी कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रैंडम एरर्स इन योर प्रॉब्लम इन योर जो इनफॉर्मेटिक्स डिसिप्लिन वी आर नॉट हियर टू सॉल्व द बॉक्स प्रॉब्लम और वॉल प्रॉब्लम जस्ट टू एक्सप्लेन दे हाउ टू प्रोसीड फर्दर वेन यू हैव or when you know that your observations or your measurements suffer from random errors चलिए तो जो पॉसिबल सिनेरियो हैं उनको लिस्ट डाउन किया गया है और जो हाइलाइटेड हैं वो बताए गए हैं दैट इन सिक्स एंड सेवन देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट फ्रॉम बॉक्स वन एंड टू यू विल हैव red ball red ball from both two box okay 
n probability is written like this. So one of you uh, told one by ten, right? लेकिन हमारा ऑब्जेक्टिव इस आंसर पे नहीं है हमारा ऑब्जेक्टिव है इस टेबल पे जो ये टेबल हमने बनाई द रीजन इज वन आई एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द रैंडम मिरर्स इन नेक्स्ट स्लाइड द नेसेसिटी फॉर डेवलपिंग दिस टेबल इज रिक्वायर्ड टू गेट यू अ लिटिल अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट the probabilistic nature of random errors okay chaliye least square adjustments aap logo ne least squares estimation padha hai everybody is aware of it but it will be explained in details in this course because these are the adjustment which are the probability of the unknowns being a certain value based on simultaneous occurrence of all observation it's very very unique definition which is written and you must read it very carefully in your previous problem where you have 20 such scenario where you are drawing the balls and then making pair similarly here in this june formic discipline you will have too many observations coming from every side angles distances azimuth elevation difference etc they all are coming and there are certain unknowns which you need to find out and you will be confused how to take into account all observation at the same time we will discuss variety of solutions also then we will see which one is the best to choose the least squares adjustments are the probability of the unknowns usually coordinates being a certain value based on simultaneous occurrence of all the observation there are certain statements which are very true early to say or to comment but gradually when we reach at the final stages of this course you will be the one who will be using those statements that with this much probability the value of this would be this with this much probability the value of this would be this it is the way of explaining the answers in our domain if you have to find out the coordinate of any unknown point it is not with the 100% probability it is with a certain level of probability you are saying because your observations are erroneous so at this moment you only understand that with the least square adjustments are the probability of the unknowns being a certain value based on the occurrence of all the observations just another example to come into this problem of random errors so assume that a table length exist that can only makes plus 1 feet or minus 1 feet when taping a distance so when you just lay just just like when you open a tape either it will give you plus 1 or either it will give you minus 1 so when you open it plus 1 then close it open it minus 1 close it it may be plus 1 plus 1 continuously successively in turns or it may be minus 1 minus 1 also so what if we are doing we have to make certain distance two tape lengths one tape length three tape lengths let us see what are the possible scenario so let the, let t be the number of ways that each error can occur and let capital t be the total number of possibilities so for a distance of one tape length only 
प्लस वन वुड अकर और माइनस वन वुड अकर ऑब्वियसली वी आर डीलिंग विद द रैंडम एरर्स सो व्हेन वी से वन टेप लेंथ यू ओपन इट इधर इट वुड बी प्लस वन क्लोज इट और अगेन ओपन इट इट विल बी माइनस वन दैट्स इट व्हेन यू आर वर्किंग विद टू टेप लेंथ्स इट कुड बी टू पॉजिटिव टू नेगेटिव वन पॉजिटिव वन नेगेटिव ओके कम Again with the three one, you have plus one plus one plus one, then minus plus plus one plus minus, and the combinations which are explained, it would have like these. Just look at this once again. Try to understand what we are trying to see. We have a one tape which is either producing plus one or minus one, and we have to measure one tape length for a distance of one tape length. it could be plus 1 or minus 1 for two tape lengths it could be plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 or plus 1 minus 1 or vice versa minus 1 plus 1 and so on you could be go you can go up to multiple tape lengths these are the scenario just try to see the table very carefully one by one column try to see number of combining observation one tape length value of resulting error plus 1 minus 1 frequency 1 1 total possibility 2 probability 1 by 2 1 by 2 that's how you devise up to next five sir yes so here what is the meaning of number of combining observation what does it mean sir exactly i mean it is only we uh, we are combining the two tape lengths three tape lengths the, the moment we are opening it the, the moment we open yes. one tape it could be one then sometimes we have to open twice twice and so on so as you could see that the for even tape lengths you have zero in it for odd length tape lengths you would have the obviously the the odd marks which is plus 3 plus 1 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1 minus 1 minus 3 let us just draw this obviously everything cannot be clear from the table information only let us just draw it 
so what we have drawn let's go back to the figure for one tape length for two tape lengths for three four five n what can you reduce from it it is very clear very crystal clear from this figure that the moment you go from limited number of observation to n number of observation towards large number of observation you will have a smooth frequency curve however in the case of less number of observation you will have frequency distribution which looks like this so behavior of random errors are studied with help of frequency distribution okay please remember we are trying to discuss the random errors we are not into the systematic one please very careful we are from previous slide onwards and since the probability is introduced we are in the random errors because for systematic errors you should know the formula to deal with it because it is a mathematical one the frequency distribution is required to understand the random errors because it's very uh, it is not a deterministic in nature it is probabilistic follow certain probability distribution and that that's very reason why we are needing the frequency distribution if several observation of a quantity are shorted out and arranged such that frequency of occurrence of observation having certain value then we have for observation we have relative frequency fi by n and if relative frequencies for various observations are plotted as ordinate the resulting diagram gives the frequency distribution in the form of histogram when you have less number of observation which can be approximated to a smooth curve when the value of n is large so it is by you know uh, by virtue that in our field the observation fall into this smooth curve which we call it bell shaped curve obviously uh, we will uh, discuss a lot of problem on histogram kind of uh, distribution also but gradually will move towards normal distribution or bell shaped distribution or gaussian distribution so behavior of random errors are studied again with the help of frequency distribution so if several observation of a quantity are shorted out and arranged such that frequency of occurrence of observation having value particular value which is nothing but uh, a particular tape length or for example we have just given a case then we have observation for uh, relative frequency which is fi by n and when this fi by n is plotted for less number of cases the histogram in terms of frequency distribution and a smoothen frequency curve in the case of large number of observation and from this slide if we if number of observation are increased to infinitely large number then each value of relative frequency will reach to a stable limit this limit is nothing but probability 
and sometimes we use probability distribution curve function as the mathematical model instead of histogram the equation of one of the widely used probability distribution function pdf is ndf which is normal distribution curve and every one of you must write on your notebook at least 10 times this function because it is very much popular it will come in every problem so you should be very much familiar of it so y as the ordinate or probability of occurrence is a function of x what is x x is nothing but your random error being a certain value obviously 1 by sigma root 2 pi exponential minus 1 by 2 x minus mu by sigma whole square so you are on the one axis you have probability of occurrence and on other axis you have observations so this equation is called the normal distribution or gaussian distribution or simply the normal So with this, uh, we stop here. If you have any questions, you can simply ask. In summary, we just started the concept of measurements and errors, and then we finally discussed that no measurement is exact in nature. every measurement contains error we do not know the true value we only know the best estimate of the true value which is mpv and the error is categorized in to three types gross systematic and random gross can be easily removed because it is a very uh, large i would say in terms of value if you see a group of observations so it would be removed then you have systematic error and then you will have the random errors so obviously systematic and blender must be removed before processing further the randomness of the observation cannot be removed since it is not a, it is not in deterministic nature it is probabilistic in nature and that's why we are discussing the probabilistic uh, nature by helping of a probability distribution function which is pdf one of the popular pdf which arrive out of one discussion of tape length is bell shaped curve and one of the popular bell shaped curve is gaussian distribution function for which we will continue further and we will solve multiple problems based on this pdf okay any questions